Hey, what's going on guys? So I know I've had, you know, guests on the channel lately and things are kind of changing, but I am going to be making videos here and there. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about Bootstrap because Bootstrap 5 Alpha has been released. I did a video on it about, uh, about a month ago or so and showed you, you know, the new features and how to get set up and all that. But I've been, I've been asked a lot lately, should I learn Bootstrap? Is it worth it? Uh, am I going to need to know it? Stuff like that. So I wanted to kind of address it. So everyone has their own opinion. Some people hate Bootstrap and hate CSS frameworks and would say, don't learn it, it's not worth it or whatever. Uh, in my opinion, I think pretty much anyone that deals with the front end should learn it because it's pretty easy to learn. I mean, it's not like learning a language. It's not like learning, you know, a framework like a JavaScript framework or a PHP framework or something like that. It's basically just m memorizing classes and, and not even memorizing them, just knowing where to look in the documentation and knowing what it, what it's capable of. Uh, and also maybe knowing the JavaScript widgets. So with that said, I think that it's worth learning. Uh, but one thing that I really, really want to stress is that I think it's really important to learn CSS first, to learn HTML, CSS. You should be able to build a full website, a full static website without Bootstrap before you go ahead and learn either Bootstrap or any CSS framework. Um, and as far as what you should learn in CSS, I'm not saying you need to master it and learn like animation and stuff like that, but I would say learn all the basics, you know, obviously colors and backgrounds and stuff. The box model is really, really important to understand padding, margin, border, stuff like that. Um, and also positioning. So I would suggest learning Flexbox. I would suggest learning um, uh, CSS Grid so that you can align things properly without having to use a framework. Now with that said, once you get those fundamentals down and you've built maybe a couple sites by yourself without a framework, then go into learning Bootstrap and um, I think that it's it's worth it because like I said it's easy to learn and it's it's good for people that aren't really great with like design a lot of programmers don't have a good eye for design so it helps them out helps them structure things if you're not great with CSS like I said you should at least know the basics but you might not be great with it so you can use that on your front end maybe you deal most mostly with the back end um, and that's another thing is it's really great for prototyping so let's say you're a Django developer or Ruby on Rails or Laravel or Node and Express whatever it might be you can focus on that, focus on working with the database, uh, your whole back end, and then use Bootstrap to, to just kind of use as a prototype for your front end. Even if you plan on using something else later on, at least it looks decent. You can print out nice looking tables and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's as simple as including the CDN. Um, now, if you're planning on using Bootstrap, you know, as for the website, as for the front end, then I would highly suggest customizing it because you don't want it to look like every other bootstrap site. And in order to do that, you need to learn how to get it set up, download the source files. You can install it with NPM. I actually showed you how to do that in the bootstrap five video that I did about a month ago. Uh, so you can install it. You can use SAS. SAS is another thing that I would highly recommend learning. And it's another thing that's really easy to learn. Uh, and when I say easy, I mean relative to other, to learning a language or something like that. You can basically learn SAS in like a weekend if you have, you know, if you, you dedicate that time and, and your attention to it. Um, so learning SAS, you can customize things. You don't have to use the default colors and stuff like that. You can change up your primary, secondary colors. Um, you can include certain parts of Bootstrap, so you don't even have to include the whole thing. If you want to use, I don't know, just cards and buttons and alerts, you can just include those three things instead of including the entire framework, which will save you on file size. Uh, and with Bootstrap 5, you don't even need jQuery anymore. So file size isn't really a, an issue anymore with at least going into Bootstrap 5. Um, another thing that it's good for is the widgets, JavaScript widgets. So not everybody that builds, you know, websites, static websites, and even small web apps, not everybody knows how to create like a hamburger menu or a modal. Uh, and you should learn that stuff. I'm not saying that you should just never learn that, but 
it's it gives you an easy way to implement that into your projects before you really get into into JavaScript, you know, dealing with the DOM and stuff like that. Um, so it's great for the the little JavaScript widgets. Now, one of the biggest complaints that that I've heard over the years about Bootstrap and and other CSS frameworks is that they all look the same. And this can be true if you if you don't take the time to really customize. Um, a lot of these sites can look the same and, and you can spot it from a mile away that it uses Bootstrap or Materialize or whatever. Not so much with Tailwind. Tailwind is kind of different uh, in its own category. But if we take a look at some Bootstrap themes, this is themes.getbootstrap.com. So these are premium themes that you can buy. But I just wanted to kind of take a look at some of them. So you have this, this is kind of bootstrappy looking. You have this style. And then you have some dashboards that are pretty similar looking, but they look really nice. So if you create like a CMS or an e-commerce backend, I mean, this, this looks pretty nice, you know, here. So the, a lot of these will look kind of similar because this is the the get bootstrap website but if we go to like a site like wrapbootstrap.com where there's just different publishers and different designers and stuff um, or different developers you can see that a lot of these look different some of them do look the same but i will say that just websites in general these days look pretty similar so for example if we take a look at this one here you know, we have the logo, the nav bar, we have this big background image with some text and a button. This is very, very standard. You'll see this a lot, and it doesn't matter if it's Bootstrap or, or Custom or some other framework. So you have that area, then you'll have the, the three icons and the cards. You'll have like a split two, two area uh, section. So this is very standard. And that's one thing I will say about websites these days is a lot of them do look the same. Now, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because when people go to a website, they don't necessarily care about the design. They just want it to be readable. And I think a lot, I think the, the, the style of, of um, you know, that we're, just, we're looking at now that we have these days is very clean, easy to read. Things are spaced out. I remember back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, Every website was different. They were all unique, but they were horrible. You could, you know, the contrast, you had uh, crazy animations and marquee scrolling text. And it was just, uh, a lot of them were just horrible looking and you couldn't even find what you wanted to. So even though today the sites are, uh, you know, they're not as uh, flashy, I guess, they're easy to read. They're nice and clean. They're nice looking um, and bootstrap kind of goes with that with that uh, that general style I guess so back to learning bootstrap I think that it's well worth it um, it's you can learn it quick you don't need to memorize every class you always have the documentation there to reference you have the JavaScript widgets um, bootstrap 5 now you don't even need jQuery so it's definitely something that I would suggest learning but I, I'm not saying you should always use it of course learn HTML and CSS before you jump into any CSS framework. I think that's really important, at least in, in my own opinion. But uh, but that's it, guys. I, I get this question a lot, so I wanted to kind of address it in a video, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.